Something weird is going on. Oh, you don't say Sailor Jupiter. What What could possibly be going on? What? A giant alien demon is emerging from Hotaru's body? I, I think that's a little bit more than just weird. Hello, my name is CJ, and welcome to my review of Sailor Moon Crystal, episode 37, act 36, infinity 10, infinite, upper atmosphere. So, uh, let, let's just get to the episode review. I got, a, I got a lot to talk about. The good. So, the building destruction in the first part of the episode, in the middle of the moon complex, was awesome. I liked how the lights from the attack actually went up the building before it blew up. That was really, really cool. Uh, speaking of destruction and chaos, how... I don't understand. Was Toy Animation, like, watching my last... Uh, episode review or something and saw that I was complaining about the fact that Mistress Nine didn't look alien enough because holy crud did they get her right in this episode. I mean, I was very impressed, you know, when she was trying to emerge from Hotaru's body, uh, Mistress Nine's eyes started going crazy and her face started getting all stretched out like it was in the manga. I was very, very impressed. I mean, this was a great, great change from toy animation um, from the previous episodes. I... At first, kind of understood why they did it, because I thought, okay, well, Mistress Nine in the manga, her alien-like appearance really doesn't fit this art style. But then they proved me wrong in this episode and actually go ahead and make her look like an alien. Um, you know, when she's emerging from her body, that, that form that she takes is actually not all too different from her form in the manga. In fact, it's quite similar, uh, to the point where I'm re very, very impressed. Uh, again, this is amazing that they actually went ahead and did this. I just wonder why they didn't do this for previous episodes. It's kind of confusing. I wonder if it's something to do with a director taking on this episode uh, that wasn't working on the previous ones. Uh, there were some nice added touches with dialogue. Uh, in some of Hotaru's last moments, she actually does remember Chibiusa, and Chibiusa is part of her motivation to act and get the souls that Mistress Nime has consumed out of her body. So I thought that was a really, really nice touch. Um, another nice added bit of dialogue was that uh, Chibiusa, or rather Sailor Chibi Moon, says to the others that, you know, Hotaru lives on in us. You know, Hotaru's sacrifice is what basically has led us to this moment. You know, she doesn't say that exactly, but it's inferred that Chibiusa is celebrating Hotaru's life. I thought that was a really, really nice choice. Um, in the manga, it's not handled poorly, but when Hotaru dies, they kind of just they kind of just move on. So I, I thought it was a nice uh, adaptation choice to have Chibiusa, or rather, again, Sailor Chibi Moon, honor Hotaru's memory like that. That was very, very cool. The meh. I don't really have a particular scene or adaptation choice for this section, so I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about my feelings of Sailor Moon Crystal being an adaptation of the original manga. Now, since the beginning, since Sailor Moon Crystal was first announced, I pray that it wouldn't be a direct adaptation of the manga. The reason I felt this was because I we've had the manga for 20 years now. I've read it about a dozen times. I am not surprised by anything anymore. In fact, I'm almost envious of uh, Sailor Moon fans who haven't read the manga and are experiencing Sailor Moon Crystal as their first look into this story because I can just, I can read about their joy, their surprise. It's, it's a lot of fun being able to experience from experience it from their side. Um, however, I'm just not surprised anymore. Uh, that aside, though, another reason why I was very scared about it being adapted into an anime is that Sailor Moon is a manga based on emotions. Um, what I mean by this is that Sailor Moon doesn't use logic and strategy to win the day. She uses her confidence, her belief in her friends. She uses, you know, her sense of justice to overcome the enemy. Um, usually what'll happen is it'll be like, oh, this enemy is super powerful, and Sailor Moon's sad, and she's like, oh, you know, is this the force that will defeat us? And, and her friends are like, no, Sailor Moon, we believe in you! And Sailor Moon will be like, yeah, they believe in me! And then she'll unlock some new power or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not being, like, critical of that. You know, it's, it's fun to have a fluff story like that. Something that's, you know, uh, doesn't have a lot of substance, but still has a lot of heart, a lot of character. You know, so I, I don't mind that at all. But when you're adapting something like that to an anime, that's where the problems come in. Um, when you have characters, in the manga, the characters fly for no reason. Um, they'll just fly around, you know, they'll um, fall, you know, like they're, they're falling like they're gonna die. And it's like, wait, why, were you, why are you falling now when you could just 
flown at any time? Can you not fly all the time? You know, there's questions like that, where if you're reading Sailor Moon manga, like, critically like that, you, you will question pretty much every single chapter for some reason. So I was very, very scared that this anime adaptation would adapt it, like, almost directly, you know, with little to no changes. And of course, my fears were realized when the first season of Sailor Moon Crystal came out, and people, of course, complained that the Sailor Soldiers were flying for no reason. Um, <laughs> so, I guess what I'm saying is, at this point, I, I am very happy with how Sailor Moon Crystal, this, this third season, that is, has gone, but at the same time, you know, I do wonder, what would it have been like if Toy Animation had actually taken some risks on this? Um, that being said, of course, though, and again, I, I should clarify, I am mostly happy with how things have gone so far. Now let's get to the bad, and oh boy, I have a lot to talk about. Some footage of news broadcast was cut from this version. I was kind of disappointed by that because um, one issue I've always had with the Sailor Moon manga is that Sailor Moon as a character doesn't feel connected to the rest of the world. Kind of like that's actually something that the original anime uh, is a little bit stronger on, in that like Sailor Moon is constantly interacting with citizens. She's constantly in the media. She's like a big, big part of the world she inhabits. In the manga, that's not really the case. Like characters say they see Sailor Moon a lot, but Sailor Moon hardly interacts with the average citizen. So the little bit we do get here and there is nice, and I'm really, really upset that that was cut. All right, and then we get to <laughs> what I like to call supreme quality. Um, ooh, this is some of the worst animation quality we've had this entire season. Um, and really, it doesn't. It's not so much like how the characters look, but really the direction, like how they decided to frame characters. Um, the first, of course, being, and I'm sure most of you guys noticed this, the hilarious little bunny rabbit jump that Chibiusa does when she leaves Mamoru's apartment. Holy crud was that! I literally, I literally laughed out loud. I was, and it, it's not a funny moment. In fact, that moment in the manga where, when Hotaru says goodbye to Chibiusa, you know, it's a tearful moment. It's, it's an incredible moment. For that to be undercut, by Chibiusa doing this, like, stilted little bunny hop, like, wee! Like, it's literally, nothing changes about it. She's just like, wee! She kind of, like, jumps from one um, place to the next. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, that whole scene now is, like, ruined because of this. <laughs> like, it, it really made me angry, actually. And I, I, I haven't felt that way, really, since, I mean, the first and second seasons. Um, you know, of course, later on, you know, we get one of the most hilarious shots I've seen in all of Sailor Moon Crystal, not just this third season, um, where, you know, Sailor Moon calls on everyone, you know, for their power. I mean, this scene just baffled me with how stupid it was. I mean, I, I have no other word for it. Um, there's a shot of Sailor Moon and the inner soldiers looking pretty dirt, and Sailor Moon goes, Guys! And then it zooms, like, slightly out, and then, like, the outer soldiers come in, like, awkwardly, into the frame, nod, and then it zooms back into the derp soldiers, and Sailor Moon, of course, you know, commences her transformation to Super Sailor Moon. You know, what follows is some of the most awkward animation I've ever seen. Um, the fact that they obscured the character's eyes in this moment, you know, when there's no darkness, you know, it's, it's a very lighted scene, was very confusing. What is going on here? I mean, I just, I don't get this choice. Why make everybody look like they're either tired or bored? I mean, there's no passion in this scene. I mean, this is supposed to be the scene where we are introduced to Super Sailor Chibi Moon, which by the way, that name is absolutely hysterical, but that's, that's another point. Um, I mean, come on. Like, this is supposed to be Super Sailor Chibi Moon's debut, and they totally destroyed it. I mean, it's one of the one of the most powerful moments in the Infinity Arc, and it's just garbage. It's just trash. Uh, speaking of Super Sailor Chibi Moon, though, I was very, very disappointed in the transformation sequence that they chose uh, for Super Sailor Chibi Moon. You know, when you, when you watch the original anime, equal screen time is given to both Sailor Moon and Sailor Chibi Moon in their super transformation. Um, so I was expecting something pretty similar here, or at least something more creative than that, and nope, they just kind of showed Sailor Moon's transformation, gave a tiny little bit of time to Sailor Chibi Moon, and that was it. And it really didn't look that good. I was not happy about that. Um, yeah, they, they messed it up. I just don't get it. I mean, there's a whole other season where 
Sailor Chibi Moon is constantly going to be transforming into Super Sailor Chibi Moon, so why not make her transformation something awesome? I mean, this is something that we're going to be seeing over and over again, unless they aren't planning for another season. Oh god, I hope not. That would be terrible! Oh lord, no! Oh, please no! Toy Animation, continue it! No! Overall, this episode gets my ranking of a D+. Now, you might think this might be a harsh score, and please let me explain myself, because I'm not just trying to be mean or controversial here. Um, two very important scenes, that is Hotaru and Shibuyusa's goodbye, and Super Sailor Chibi Moon's initial appearance, were both completely destroyed by awful direction decisions. These are the two, in my opinion, the two most pivotal scenes in the entire episode, and they were the worst parts of the episode. That, to me, is almost failure territory. Um, I gave it a D-plus simply because I was just so impressed um, by the decision to make Mistress Nine look more like her manga counterpart in that she was actually terrifying. Um, but that still can't save this episode. I'm praying at this point that Toy Animation takes a step back, looks at this episode, and in these next two episodes, really, really takes the time to make sure that the Infinity Arc ends with the bombastic nature that it needs to. You know, don't mess up Sailor Saturn. Do not mess up Sailor Saturn. I mean, Toy Animation, you have come so far and you've done such a good job. Do not mess this up. Make this episode the worst episode of the season and leave it behind. Please, I'm begging you. I am begging you. So, until next time, this is CJ, signing off.